Welcome to Access Sports Weekly here on AccessWDUN.com. Bo Wilson alongside Jeff Hart and our producer, Seth Chapman, back in the house. Last week, we kind of had to go the podcast route because we were at the basketball media day. So uh. so we, uh, we, we canned the camera and went to just audio only, but this week we're back. Week number 13, first round of the high school football playoffs as we're rolling on in. Also, to basketball season. There's no rest here at Access as we go straight from football into basketball, Jeff. And, of course, if we look at this first round of the high school football playoffs, some interesting matchups, also some interesting endings to Week 12 high school football. Uh, that's correct on both. Yes. Which one did you think was more interesting, the endings or what's coming up? I thought the endings were. Yeah, Simply because as, Central Clark Central beating Buford for the region that, championship. That, that was, was a shocker. Shocking story of the night. Because I, I had seen Clark Central, and honestly, even though, you know, they ended up kind of beating Johnson kind of badly. Right. Honestly, I thought that game should have been like a touchdown at half. Mm-hmm. Johnson kind of really shot themselves in the foot. I wasn't overly impressed with Clark. They're good. I didn't see them beating Buford uh, right. in any way, fashion, or form. Well, over at uh, Lynn Cottrell Field at the Breakyard, uh, North Hall beating nice. Dawson County. Outla- nice. Yeah, see, we got that. Nice. Uh, la- outlasting Dawson in that game to, to seal their first home playoff game since 2012. Hard to believe it's been that long yeah. since a home playoff game at the Brickyard. No doubt. It, it's, uh, I, I, you know, and they're 12-1 and one all time at home in the playoffs. It, it, it's just it's, that might be the most interesting game. There are some, and I think just because I think if North Hall was fully healthy, I would pick them as a prohibited favorite, but they're missing some key pieces. Uh, no doubt. And that's going to be a tough game. It will be a tough game. For but them. they what, have the home field. Now, when you brought the Ethan's footage back here to the station after the Gainesville Lanier game, and we we got to the end of that game and that footage, uh-huh. and we saw the hit on DJ Whew. in the end zone, of which he caught the ball, and then the hit was thrown on him so fiercely that the ball bounced out and basically knocked DJ out. Yeah, he was out cold. And the officials, if there's ever a prime example, in my opinion, of if you're calling it targeting in high school, why was that not called? I think that was the prevailing thought of pretty much everybody on the sideline. I was 10 yards from when that happened. I mean, in the old days, going back to, say, the 70s, Jack Tatum with the Steelers and stuff like that, you know, who who did head hunt, uh, you know, that was kind of a textbook way of separating Mm -hmm. the receiver from the ball. Yep. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it in old school football. Uh, He did hit him with his shoulder, but he hit him high. And in today's football, you can't do that. And they had already called one penalty like that during the game. So it made no sense. Um, now, it would have moved them, and I, and I asked Heath Webb about this, because that was four seconds left in the game, so yes. they had time for one play. One play. So let's say they call the penalty, and so they move them 15 yards. That puts them on the 23. I said, do you kick? Because they were down three. Do you kick go overtime? That was at the extreme range of his kicker who had already missed two field goals. So we might have been in the same spot. However, because – they were at the 38 instead of the 23 on that last play. It was, you know, an, an insane Hail Mary. Um, you know, you might have been able to call up a little better play on the last thing and maybe score and win the game because, really, DJ had the ball. I mean, it was a great oh, play. Oh, yeah, he had the ball. He had the no ball. Uh, and they would have won the game. So, um, I, you know, I don't know why they didn't call it. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of uh, – Let's just say there was a lot of conversation on the sideline over the next five minutes. <laughs> no so, doubt. Um, no yeah, doubt. You know, well, it's, uh, I don't know. Well, Gainesville, they, they wrap up the three seed with that loss, and they will go to Alatoona this week as we uh, will look at some of those that game here in just a little bit. But the big news of the week, other than the high school playoffs and other than high school basketball uh, tipping off this week, reclassifications, region alignments, they are out, Jeff, and wow – Look what we have here in these classifications. Well, I, I our region alignments. Yes, it's interesting. Uh, I I think for most of our area teams, winners. For I most agree. of I agree. them, I, not all of them, not but all. For most, and, and if we're talking just football, because there's a couple in here. When you look at basketball, ooh, dog. Yeah, yeah. You know, like particularly with Lakeview Academy being in six A private with Fellowship Christian, Kings Ridge, Pinecrest, and St. Francis basketball powers. 
uh, you know, and Lakeview is really good. I mean, they're going to struggle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but that's in basketball. So in football, I think mostly winners. I, I feel like this is probably something that, you know, we might need to save this for the entire podcast next week. Yeah. I know yeah. we're going to touch on it here. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of like where most of our, t- I mean, our biggest loser. Okay. So if you look okay. at, if you look at these region classifications, now one yeah. of the things that, that was ongoing yesterday because my phone was kind of blowing, I say, say yesterday on Tuesday, my phone was blowing up from the standpoint of, Hey, I've heard greater Atlanta Christian school has won their appeal to stay down in three, a So I said, hold on, I'll check. Well, the answer was right. You know, yes, they won their appeal. What's interesting to me, and it's classical GHSA committee stuff, is the fact that you have the committee voting earlier this year to eliminate the cap on how many spots you can move up based on the multiplier. I mean, how many classifications? How many classifications right. you can move up based on the multiplier? So it used to be you could only move up one class, you could be forced into seven A or forced out of single way, all this kind of crap that went on with it. And now, so they took the cap off of it. Well, the cap pushed GAC up to 4A. The cap also pushed Blessed Trinity up to 5A. It's the same kind of uh, route taken by both teams with their That's numbers come out. That's two each. classifications each. two classifications each when their numbers. However, the GAC did what? Well, what happened is GAC's numbers, they are double A. So the true numbers, but the 2.0 multiplier pushed them up to 4A. So the reclass committee said, you win your appeal. You're not going up two classes. You stay in 3A. Blessed Trinity, however, same instance, same case, two classifications. Their numbers said they were uh, 3A or 4A. Uh, and hello, welcome to 5A. Your appeal has been denied. So I don't understand the kind of hypocrisy, I guess you could say, of the way that they look at things on this reclass committee and how they allow that to come through, you know, regardless of the fact that you're private schools. But I just don't agree with what happened there. But GAC, they're in 3A. They're not in 7-3A. They're in 7-5 or in 5-3A. And the fireworks that you heard going off <laughs> yesterday, that was every team in the North Georgia area going, yippee. <laughs> no, every uh, team going, wow, we, really? Yeah. it's you know? Uh, you know, we were talking about this yesterday. Um this is why people, I think, have an issue with the GHSA. It's the consistency issue. Okay, if you're going to make a rule, stick with it and be consistent. Right. If it's if it's this way for one team, and the exact same scenario for another, stay with it. And there's no consistency. That's why people have a real issue with the GHSA. So, if there's some bones to be picked, that's why it's just a consistency. You know, rules, you make you make the rules, you make the bylaws, stick to them. Right. Nobody right. have a problem with that, but they don't stick to them. Well, you it's know, these, selective. these rules, and of course, Jeff and I will we'll do a podcast. Also, we're going to have Adam Lindsay uh, on as well. He's I think he's part of one of those committees. So we're going to talk to him a little bit. Uh, I think he's going to come on Chop Block tomorrow night at, or on Thursday night. Got to talk to him first, though. But hopefully we can get him in, talk to him about these reclass. Your biggest winner here of the re- region alignments. Who, wow. who is the biggest the winner? The biggest winner, because I think there are several. Um, biggest winner, uh, I hate, you know, in an odd sort of way, I'm going to have to say Lakeview. You're going to say Lakeview. I mean, in this sense, you look at the team. Fellowship Christian this year is 10-0. and Everybody else in that region has a losing record. Right. Well, there you go. I, I, you know, now in, that's football. A, in, in football, in football is what we're talking now, here. They're not. That's not a winner in basketball. We haven't really. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really that's a loser the basketball in basketball. Thing. That that's Todd Cottrell going up. Uh, he's he's sending out resumes. <laughs> I think I think Ty, I'm just kidding, Todd. Just kidding. I, <laughs> I think Towns County might be your biggest loser from the standpoint of travel. Ooh, yeah, because they're thrown in with uh, uh, Lincoln County, Greene County, Social Circle, Warren County, Washington, Wilkes, Warren County, and that like, a, uh, like Florida border. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know where that so, is. So but, I think, but geez. from from travel wise and that's some really good football too uh, in that new region right. 8a public so i think they might be the biggest loser biggest loser yeah i, I that that's a big uh habersham you got to think it's got to be up there as, as one of the biggest losers wow they're, that, that they're throwing it yeah they've been cow. thrown in with buford central Annette, decula denmark lanier so you got two uh De- decula, two final four them. teams from last year a team that traditionally plays for the state title winder barrel that's gotten a lot better denmark yeah who you know, uh, right. is, I mean, that that's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, 
Another winner I like is is Riverside going into eight double A. I think Riverside. I think that's that, a good move for them. That's there be they will be very very competitive in that region yeah. in all sports. Should be interesting. So, uh, look for our podcast uh, coming. We'll talk more about these spring classifications. Now, looking over here uh, this week, top three games are top games on the schedule for high school football. Lovett is going to North Hall. That game on FM 102.9. Gainesville at Alatoona. That game broadcast live on 94.5 FM. The Lake, the Lake Flowery Branch at Cartersville going to be on AM 550 WDUN. So you can follow those games. And South Atlanta at Union County as the Panthers try to go for their first playoff win, I believe. It is. They've never won a playoff game. This is a game, I think, I'm going to go up there to Blairsville because I have a feeling that we're, we're going to see some history made. I, this is a winnable game. Um, you know, it, they're, they're going to have to work for it. They're, you know, you figure South Atlanta is going to have some athletes on, on the field. Um, that region, you know, that region not as good as the one they matched up with last year with Bremen and all that. Right. Uh, I think it's a very winnable game. They've got one of the best offenses in, you know, in double oh, yeah. A. Their defense has really played pretty well other than the Raven game. We'll have uh, full coverage of that uh, game as far as from Jeff. He'll be up there uh, tweeting and doing whatever else, uh, getting that info out about Union County. Now, earlier this week, had a chance to sit down with uh, Coach Bishop as we did our Gaining the Edge segment. But we sat down with Coach Bishop, and at the end of the interview, I asked him what he thought and what he thought it would take uh, are the keys to the game to beating Lovett. Lovett this week, um, what do you think about it? Uh, obviously a, a storied program year in and year out. They're coached well. Uh, they play well together. They have a great little system on both sides of the ball. But uh, I feel real good about where we're at. We're playing at home. Our kids play a little bit better. Uh, our style of football is not something everybody sees every day. And we've done a lot of things over the last few weeks to tweak what we do to make it just a little bit better. So uh, I'm looking for a, a fun Friday night. Coach Bishop talking about loving and, and- Really talking about, and he told me before we went on video that he felt like that they had a really good shot of of uh, playing really well against Lovett, and and he said Lovett is a good football team. Lovett beat GAC earlier this year, so you know he's going to play Lovett. The good thing for the the Trojans, they are playing at home. Well, I think we mentioned that earlier in the show. They're twelve and one at the Brickyard, uh, so you got to like their chances. They're hard to beat in the playoffs uh, traditionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will be dealing with some injuries, right. um, which, you know, could have an effect. Good. However, you know, they have shown resiliency all year long and moving some pieces around and, and getting production where they need it. Um, if it wasn't for the injuries, I would pick them certainly as a favorite in this game. I think it's a toss up. It's going to be a great game. We're going to have that on radio. Um, that's going to be one of the probably one of the better games of, of our uh, eight games so. going on. I think so as well. Flowery Branch is traveling down to Cartersville in a season that probably Coach Hall is, is, is you know, you're happy from the standpoint of, of you're in the playoffs, but they are a four seed in the playoffs. And, and uh, of course, we all know the story behind Branch this year. You know, Elijah Ganey, their starting quarterback, went down, has been out all season. Uh, you know, and, and Flowery Branch has a really good defense. It's just the offense for the last couple, three weeks has not really been producing. It hasn't. And, uh, you know, I, we kind of differ on this scheme. I, I, and when I say we differ, you're, you're thinking it's a, it's a tall task. I think they can win this game. And, and I'm not trying to throw you under right. the bus. I, well, I agree I, with I, no, no, look, I, I agree with everything you just said. Defense is great. Uh, the offense has struggled. And when you're in a game like this with the number one team, mm-hmm. that's a team that's picked to win the state title, right. you've got to score. I think the defense can hold up. I do. They've shown that against Blessed Trinity. They've shown that against Mares. Mm-hmm. Um, so the question will be, can the offense get production? If the offense gets production, the defense plays the way it's doing. I mean, I say it could be an upset special. And it would, I mean, that would be, you know, shot hurt around the world that they can pull this one off. Yeah, no doubt. Shot hurt around the world, of course. Uh, Seth and I, we got out to Flowery Branch on Wednesday to talk to Coach Ben Hall and just ask him what the keys of the game were against Cartersville. What are the keys of the game against Cartersville for you guys to move to the second round? We just have to play loose. We have to be loose. And then, uh, you know, like I said, there's freedom in a game like this. Our kids, you know, you can't play not to lose the game. And, you know, you can't think of it as, well, if you don't win, it's the last game. Just go out there and lay it on the line and play, play our brand of football. We have to be physical on the line of scrimmage. I mean, that'll never change. We have to protect the football, and we have to avoid giving up a big play, make them earn everything they get. And, and uh, 
And if we do that, it'll be a four-quarter game, and we've, we've got a shot. All right, Coach, man. Appreciate you taking the time. Good luck this week. Thanks, Bo. You know, when you go down to Flowery Branch, Jeff, and you talk to Coach Hall, and, you know, he, he gives you some really good stuff. Always. I mean, he he's, you know, he just tells you like it is. No doubt. And and I, you know, I agree with him. Yes. I, I totally agree with him. So that game, again, on AM 550, you can check that game out live. We'll have full coverage. Brian Stewart, uh, uh, Gene Anderson, Harsh G, will be on the call of that game. All right. Wait, so, wait. Brian Stewart doing a Flowery Branch game? Yes, this is his eighth Flowery Branch game this year. This Number year. eight. Oh, I thought that was this month. He is the voice of the Falcons. No doubt. So uh, is AM is 550. He on payroll at this point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so now to the point of the show where, uh, well, Seth has a special announcement for us. What do you have, Seth? Well, unfortunately, this week for the uh, for the Seth's Picks version, I unfortunately had to be out on Friday night. So we didn't have as much video as we would have hoped, but we've come up with a brand new video idea for our Friday nights. You know, are you guys tired of having to trudge through all these Did videos? And that? Our, to our viewers, are you guys tired uh, of having to trudge through all the videos just to find the highlights that you want? Well, we're going to give you a brand new video. It's going to be a hodgepodge of our scoring plays of the evening. So every scoring play that we've caught... On Friday evening, we're going to throw them all together on one video and send it out to you guys so that you can maybe even just, you know, give that one video a click and find what you're looking for from Friday nights. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Might even throw some effects in there. Who knows? We're just going to we're just going to wing it for this one. I really thought he was about to say, if so, call (laughs) 1-800-TOUCHDOWN. 1-800-TOUCHDOWN. Is that number available? We'll check on that. We'll check on that. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Well, uh, so look for that. That will be coming up. Uh, I'm, I'm we'll looking have, forward to that. have some of those mishmashes on uh, mashes on Friday. So that, that'll be good. Right. Looking forward to that. All right. So the the point of the show that everybody looks forward to is the naming. Will Hart <laughs> Team of the Week. There you go. It's the Will Hart Team of the Week. I'm looking forward to this. Do you I? Do I? You know, it? for for the first time ever. The first time ever we've Bo went, versus Jeff <laughs> since we've been doing the showdown of the century. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> I'm right across the table. <laughs> is it coming from the speakers? That's no, coming behind me there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for the first time ever, we, we had a response to our Will Hart Team of the Week, man. We did. Yeah. Heath Webb. Heath Webb. Oh, re- oh, yes. Yeah, he was he honored. Did. He he was. He he didn't want to say it publicly though. <laughs> he, he did specifically say, "I'm not going to say that publicly," <laughs> which I don't understand. I, why not? I, why not? I, I mean, don't it's, understand. It's a great. It. It's I think a, we just great. outed him though. Yeah, we did kind of out him. Sorry, coach. You know, look, look. You know, Coach Webb, if you're going to email us and say, you know, good job, but you're not, you you can't officially say it, then just don't email. <laughs> I mean, if you're, you know, be ready to go on record well, here. Well, the good part is, is that 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 Coach Webb listened long enough to get to that point. Yeah, I was, so, that was the other was, thing. I was like, you know, wow, you listen to that whole thing. <laughs> that was a good thing. I can't make it that long. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so the Will Hart team. It's your show, Jeff. <laughs> so the Will Hart. I got of the things week. to do like laundry. Yeah, sure you no, do. No, I'm just kidding. Will Hart Team of the Week nominees this week. Northall beating Dawson County to seal that home playoff advantage. Rabin beating Union once again for the Region 8-2A <clears throat> title. And Chastity slamming West Hall, putting up 70 points against uh, the You're Spartans. going first on this because I... Why the, do I have to go first? Because, it's, because you're the sports editor. No, it's okay. Yo, there you go. Now, I mean, that's the only time you ever say that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's kind of like because... You, your kids say because your dad that's why you have to do it yeah i am not equating that so in any, anyway with so you, anyway no. uh i'm gonna go with north hall beating dawson for their first home playoff berth since 2012 that's a good one that that is a good one um i think i'm gonna go with raven though, oh because i think right you know it was for the it was a region ooh, championship ooh. this was a game that that we all felt that you know union had the horses Maybe to knock them off this year, and Raven really—I think they made a statement coming into the playoffs. Raven did. Okay. So, oh, I had to send it to Seth. All right, so Seth, let's set it up for you. North Hall. Uh oh, but he—you know—he wasn't there on Friday. Are we going to have to go? Well, I've got kind of like a a gist of the things you have. You have. All right, so North Hall beat Dawson. They held on to beat them forty to thirty-seven. Yeah. Raven hammered Union County forty-nine to six. Uh, mm. Chester T beat West Hall seventy 
to 14. The 70 points was a school record, a program record. Do, 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 do. Okay, guys, so we've got big accomplishments for all three. Huge, huge, of huge, 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 huge accomplishments huge. for all three of our candidates today. <laughs> um, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. Um, if I don't come back next week, I'm sorry, guys. Huge. It was fun. Um, but, uh, man... I will say I'm always partial. I'm always partial to the mountain school kids. The winner is. Oh. I love. I not only do I love how they play. Will he I love watching them, and I love, you know. Will he go? I love North where North. they play. It's such a beautiful place. Or will it be a left turn? <laughs> <laughs> goes completely the other way from the entire lead in. Will it come um, down to paper, rock, scissors? What is? I think it kind of will. I think I'm gonna have to throw it to rock, paper, scissors today because I'm torn uh, between all three of our candidates. Because you, as you said, we have uh, North Hall, their first okay. home, he home stopped, playoff folks. birth. He cannot in pick. a while. Raven, That's region right. champs, six years in a row. Yeah, it's so millennial of you. All and right, then, let's go. Can't make a decision. <laughs> let's go. Okay, ready? Right. With right, the wait school. a second now. What record. was the winner? What was the winner last time? We'll have to go back and look I, I at the won. tape. We'll have I to won. consult the tape. You won. No, I but won. what did I think you throw? He did. I can't tell you what I'm going to throw. I no, mean, what did be, you? What I did you? No, throw? I'm not telling you that. You got. You got to go in right. blind, Jeff. Here go we in go. Blind. Ready? Ready? Wait, wait. Is it one, two, three? Yes, then it's, throw it's on the fourth one. One, two, three, three, and then whatever. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ready? I'll call it. Paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, oh, and Jeff yeah. wins. Yeah. Jeff with the win. Jeff went with the the sideways scissors. Does that count? Yes. Because they don't cut paper that way. As long as it's two fingers. They don't cut paper. If it's that two way. fingers, it's he scissors. Didn't do it correctly though. If it's two fingers, it's scissors. Bo, I'm sorry. You must accept defeat. We went to but the who instant replay. Like that. I mean, who we does went it? to the it's instant like, replay. We went. I can see how replay. that might be a little see, more it's comfortable. It's a little confusing. I think we that should have to be more that. It's no, kind of like I, throwing. I, I can't no, no, lose. No, no, no. no. It's I, like throwing the scissors on the beat, table. Man. We have run off Except the field. It. We were in the dressing room, and see, the refs have left I, the building. I felt like he was going to throw the rock, so I went with the paper to cover the rock. That, up. I guess that was the winning. I guess that was the winning point. Was the deception? Scissors. Those are dull. It does not get that. You cannot cut paper that way. Scissors can be scissors, whichever. Do orientation, you're going to put it again. Them. You can't cut it. Anyway, five. Scissors whatever. or scissors, whatever orientation I they're the in, show. Bo. I just got beat. You don't hate except, the show. I'm don't say kidding. that. Just kidding. Bo, just kidding. Accept your defeat to a superior it's, opponent. I accepted it. So congratulations, Raven County. You are the Wilhart Team of the Week for your region championship win over the Panthers. You're so, welcome, j -Bo. I came through in the clutch, baby. <laughs> Raven, by the way, hosting Best Academy coming up on Friday. I don't and think they're going to be the best on Friday. I don't think so either. So, all right. Well, that's a wrap. Just a reminder to you, go to accesswdun.com's Friday game night page. We'll have stories, uh, previews, caps, everything there for you. And get you set up for Friday night's action. Also, follow us on Twitter at Friday Game Night and at WDUN Sports. Jeff is at HeartJJ22. I'm at the Bo Wilson. Seth does not do Twitter, but he does have Seth Chapman cinnamon photography something cinnamon. on Instagram. Cinnamon. <laughs> Thanks for so, that, Bo. Wait, Cinnamon. you sell Cinnabon? Yes. <laughs> search All for, day, every day, boy. Search for Seth's dishes no, I do not on his sell, Instagram page. I do not sell All Cinnabons. of them have cinnamon on them. I'm going to have so, people say I sell complete Cinnabons. Complete breakdown here at the end. <laughs> we got to be careful what we say on this show, guys, because like, I got called out at Riverside the other day for my Twix thing. Oh, you did. That's yeah, right. That's right. That's totally right. did. Okay, so uh, call Seth out on his Cinnamon page. All right, on Instagram. <laughs> All right, folks, enjoy the rest of your week, everyone.